Hi everyone, Eileen back with you again. I'd like to share this video tutorial with you today. I'm featuring a sweet poppy stencil stencil called Chinese Lanterns. And this design was by Tracy Dutton of Lavinia Stamps for sweet poppy stencils. Along with the original Lavinia Stamps stamp uh, called Chinese Lanterns. And using the two together is a lovely combination and I think it works really well. So let's get cracking. I've got my homemade stencil board here, which is a cutting mat, self-healing cutting mat with a, with a large, strong magnetic sheet uh, stuck to it. It was self-adhesive. I've placed a piece of copy paper down to protect the board because I'm using gesso now. And I've got a piece of multifarious cardstock from Lavinia Stamps, it's 12 centimetres by 12 centimetres square. There's my stencil, so just placing that on, I just want to position it on the card. I want it at an angle, so round about there, I think. That should do. Pop it down. I'm just going to use a small amount of tape just along the top to protect the cardstock from that part of the image so that I don't get gesso over areas I don't want to get gesso. Just checking you can see okay. I'm using a spatula and a small amount of Sweet Poppy Stencils white gesso and a really small amount so just uh, spread it out onto your mat. Nice and thinly because you're looking to apply very thin layers so that it dries very quickly. Cut and dry, dip, dab, dab, and then dip, dab, dab through the stencil. Doing a very quick layer, don't be too careful. You might find a certain amount of leakage underneath your stencil. Doesn't matter, it adds to the mix. The main um, stamp that I'm using will be the focus point of the card. This gessoed background is just to add interest and to give me a resist so that it makes the background look good. Right, so I've used all of that. It's a nice thin layer, just checking that the whole image has been covered with the step with the uh, gesso and then wiping the gesso off with a piece of kitchen towel and now I shall remove the stencil pop that stencil straight into water very sharp stainless steel stencils so be careful how you clean it use a brush you'll get blood all over your fingers otherwise <laughs> Right. Now, so as you can see, I hope you can see, that looks pretty cool. But it is rather thicker than I hoped it would be, so it needs drying with a heat gun. It doesn't matter that it's gone on a bit thickly, it just takes longer to dry. So lift it up, let the air go underneath, dries faster. Do the reverse side. And that should be dry enough, yeah. That should be dry enough now to work on. I'm using oxide inks need a piece of copy paper because I want to protect my work from my fingers whilst the oil in my fingers whilst I'm blending. Mustard seed, distress oxides, faded jeans and fired brick. There will also be around the edges a little later some chip sapphire. But at the moment mustard seed, faded jeans, fired brick. Starting with mustard seed and a rectangle blending. Inking up, 
sorry about that. Let's turn this off. Inking up and I'm starting, let me look this car, oh yes. I'm starting over in the bottom uh, left hand corner and then just blending, come off the mat and just blending, not being too careful. I'll just give it a nice inky amount there. Turn it round a bit. And now I'm going into faded jeans into the other corner. But I'll come back to this in a minute because I don't want that to stay blue. I want it to go green. So I'm going to blend a bit of yellow in. And then turning it round again and onto the red, which is fired brick. And another blending tool dedicated to the red. And that will go into the blue. And then round again. And then I'm back to faded jeans, so back to the blue tool. And then with a circular motion, just moving that in. Now I'm going to blend it. Uh, I was fairly heavy handed with the blend, so I was pressing quite firmly into the cardstock. Now my hand is very loose and I'm just skimming over the surface because that's how I'm going to get my blend. Just skimming over the surface, not grinding into the cardstock. And that will give me a lovely blend and get rid of any lines. And the same with, with this area here where the blue is. Again, using the red to do that. And then I'm moving on to yellow to get rid of the blend here. Or to, sorry, to do the blending here. So again, very light. Just skimming over and kissing the cardstock. And then in this area, I want to add a little bit more yellow to give me a green tone. And I might add a bit more blue here, actually. I think I've overdone the yellow. But again, skimming over the surface, taking all the lines out so all the colours will have to mingle with each other. Um, what am I looking for? Yellow. have a look at that that's not bad but I think I've overdone the yellow it's too much yellow there so let's get rid of some of that so we're going back to the blue and take it down a smidge I don't want that to be too yellow I think I might even whop in a bit of red there too. Give me some orange. You can go on adding. I mean, this is the joy of these inks. They're so forgiving. They're so, you know, they're so easy to blend. And it's good cardstock, so it holds it well. Right, that I think that will do. Okay, I'm looking for sort of a dark tone on the card, and I think that I've got it there. I'll move all of those out of the way. Pop that down. So that you can see it. Yep, you can. And now I'm going on to the stamping. So I'm looking for my stamping mat. And there it is. Pop that down there. Okay. Now before I do that, the stamping, I want to take a little bit of water and I have a cloth here, a very thin uh, cloth, muslin, and I'm going to wet the cloth and I just want to dab the ink away from these flowers that I've stenciled. Can you see how it's popping it out now white? Now, don't be too careful. You don't have to stay within the perimeter of the flower. You, it will go out a little bit onto the ink surrounding it. That's fine. It will give it a little bit of texture, adds to it. You can use a baby wipe, but I'm trying to avoid those um, because of landfill. So the less that I can use them, the better. 
there are some techniques where you really need them but this isn't one of them <laughs> so, I, I'm just not using too much water I don't want to saturate saturate the card <laughs> but um, I just need to remove that color so that it gets its own identity and it says hi I'm here all right that's good. Now another blast with a heat gun before I stamp. Right, so here we go with the stamp. There's my Chinese lantern. And I'm using two colours. Versifying Clear Tulip Red and Versifying Clear Nocturne. And I shall be using them on the stamp together. And that might contaminate the red. Now, I don't care, but you might. So you might want to stick to one colour tone. But I, I do like to see different colour tones on the same stamp, but that does mean that you will contaminate your stamp pad. To be honest, it really doesn't do it any damage. It just looks a bit mucky, but it still works all right. So your choice, but that's what I like to do. I live dangerously. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so on goes the red first. And then inking up with the black. So got the colour tone there. And there's a gap here, which is because I... I angled the stencil to give me that gap in the middle and that is where I'm aiming for my stamp to go. It will cover up some of the stenciled image, that's good. That's the idea. Pressing firmly, nice and firmly and up, lovely. Now I'm going to stamp again and more red and a bit more black. I want to pop, pop it down here now. I want to go up the side and cover up these stalks or stems of the flower that I've got. That should do. Nice and firm again. Yes, that's nice. Okay, we're almost at the end now. And then the word dreams. And that's in black again. Gentle tapping. And I'm going to pop the word down here. Trying to get it straight. Yes, that looks good. Right, move the inks well out of the way. And taking... My white pen, the one that I always use by now, Uniball Broad Nib Pigment Ink UM153. I'm just going to, I'm not going to be too careful of these. I'm just going to go around some of the petals, not all of them. Some of them are squiggly lines. You know, don't, don't be too careful or as careful as you want, you know. I'm looking for sort of an arty look. So it's an impression rather than an actual uh, accurate image. I can hear Ken upstairs talking to the ferrets. <laughs> We've got a large shower, so what he's done, he's taken one of my plastic craft boxes and he's put some water in and a load of ping pong balls, left the shower door open so when the ferrets have their morning rampage about the house and it's hot, they can go in and have a swim. <laughs> ah, right. <laughs> Actually, it's a joy to see them. They are so happy and they're cooler too. They only stay out for about an hour and we keep a close eye on them about where they go in the house and what they do. Right, nearly there now. Okay. 
see how that's brought the it's brought the image out at the back but again I'm not careful so I wanted a sort of a sketchy look and that basically is what I've got and I've got ink everywhere where I didn't dry it but anyway that won't matter so I'm going to get my ink blending tool and just rub that out it's another joy with distress inks with oxides if you get a bit of inky mark if you can get rid of them quite quickly by adding a little bit more ink over the top so that's it that's my original that's my original card where's my pop this on so you can see it a bit better that's my original card this is the one that I've just done. Do I do a matting layer here? And actually, I think I like the one that I've just done. So I might even stick that over the top. <laughs> now, the other thing that I did, I did mat and layer, as you can see, but I did the inside as well. And all I did was mat and layer, same colour scheme on the outside, and stamp the Chinese lanterns, leaving a large area for me to put my birthday greeting, or whatever it is that I want to say. Thank you for looking today. Thank you for the lovely, kind comments that you give me. It is appreciated. I won't be back until... It's bank holidays. I'm having a couple of days off. So I won't be back until Wednesday. But I'll try and find something a bit different and something nice for us to do together. Thanks every mu very much for looking. And a special hello to little Rosie, who I understand is watching my videos. Hi, Rosie. See you soon. Miss you lots. Love you. Bye for now.